Tracy. As you know, our bride has chosen you to create all of her written materials, such as the wedding invitations, the save the dates, and so on. And right now, her first event is her engagement party. So what we need from you is a save the date and an engagement party invitation. The basic design of this wedding is translated to you in these images. This will steer you in the direction the bride desires while letting you unleash your own creativity. We are very excited to see your beautiful creations. Okay, my lovelies, we're going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do for this video. I was tasked with creating the coasters for the um, engagement party as well as the engagement party invitation and the save the date for the wedding. So I'm going to show you how you can take some simple uh, vintage print ornaments, you can recolor them and reconfigure them to create something that is completely custom and all your own. So we're gonna start with this image and I've already started to erase a little bit of this frame. My bride, really liked the filigree but she did not care for the lines around it so whoops wait a minute took too much there okay so once we painted this out we had this really beautiful and ornate frame unfortunately the shape wasn't quite right because our coaster is 3.75 square so what we're going to do is we would select a portion of the frame okay and we're going to copy it and we're going to bring it over into our coaster now we have to shrink it down a little bit of course but that's no big deal we're going to bring it over size it the way we want it and then of course my bride's color scheme well black isn't in her color scheme we need to make it blue so we go up here to layer and then layer style color overlay and then you select your color and on the top of my head I don't know what her color is but never fear let me show you this is what we created by cutting apart the frame we've got a top and a bottom but then that leaves us with these bare spots on each side so what we did is we took portions of the design that we liked and reconfigured it so that we would have our square frame okay so now that's all in place the next thing that our bride wanted was her her saying that is going to appear on everything for the the various events that will be part of this wedding is evermore a wedding for the ages now my bride provided the two fonts that she wanted this one is i believe it's called brookshire let me see here Oops. e f c o brookshire okay so that's the name of the font and what we did was we pieced this together by making the first capital much larger than the rest of the fonts and then we altered the kerning so let's say that we were going to create that the way that we would do that oh golly that's that's really big isn't it let's bring that down okay now let's say that she wanted the L here to be different wanted it larger we can change the size of that particular font just that letter okay and that makes that larger now if we want to bring the letters in closer this is called adjusting the kerning you do that here you select the text and hit Control T that'll bring up this box and by changing the spacing you know either choosing a negative which will bring it in closer or if we wanted to space it out further, we could choose a positive number. For our bride, I used negative 25. So we're going to bring that text back up. Get rid of that text layer because we don't need it. We're going to bring in her evermore. And then the next thing that we're going to add is our floral swag down here on the bottom. So we started out with a single hydrangea and then we reshaped and flipped this particular image so that it would appear as a mirror image okay and that way they're both tucked behind our main layer 
but then she wanted leaves to be on each end that would extend out. Unfortunately, that particular collection of images didn't have exactly what we were looking for. So again, we took things apart, and you'll see here as I'm ticking these other layers on, I just simply cut leaves out and I pieced it together, and that gave us this. The last thing that we added was her tagline, and this was a different font. This one was called Farmhand, and on this one, instead of shrinking the space down in between letters, we extended it. So over here, you'll see we chose 20, and that brought the spacing out. Okay, so now we have our finished coaster design, and that looks like this, but you know, it always helps to provide your customer or you know your client with a finished product as well as a visual sort of showing the product in the wild so to speak for lack of a better term and for doing that I often use mock-ups so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and show you the mock-up that I use to provide to my bride what I did was just created a neutral background that wouldn't clash with her design and then I positioned the final design over top of these two coasters. Now it's all done digitally, this is not a photograph of an actual coaster, but it gives the appearance of the photograph of an actual coaster and it makes it easier to envision what the final design would be like. So this is our first product. Now let's move on to the engagement party invitation. Let me open that up really quick. Let me go back over here and okay. Now for the engagement invite, we did much the same thing. We took elements from the French print ornaments. We colored them blue. We started with this beautiful wreath in the center. This is a laurel wreath that's included in one of the collections. And then we took items, we cut them apart from that first frame that we used. I also cut the ribbon off of a different image. That's this one. Okay, I cut the ribbon off here and then it only had one of the tails. So then I painted this out with the eraser and I added another tail on the other side. So that gave us these ribbons, okay? So what I was doing was building a symmetrical toile pattern. So whatever you see on the left side of the screen over here, you're going to see again on the right hand side of the screen. And that's why I've added these aqua blue lines. I've got that running at 50% on the vertical and 50% on the horizontal. So once we've got this beautiful toile pattern, we decided to use it for both the engagement invite and also for the save the date. Let me show you that. Here's our save the date. Okay, so they definitely go together. You can tell that, but they're different shapes. They're both, the final size for both ended up being a four by six, which enabled our bride to be able to print those at her local print shop with several on a page. And that's gonna save her money. And when you're talking about doing a DIY wedding, saving money is the name of the game. So again, we used her preferred fonts and we just typed in the information that she provided. And there you have it. Again, I went with a mock-up to show, where did it go? Da, da, da. Let me see here. Yes, okay, here we go. This is the mock-up that I used for the engagement party invitation. And again, this is just a Photoshop file that has a smart object and all you do is drop your design in here and it really helps to envision what that final design is going to look like in the wild. <laughs> I keep saying that but you know you know what I mean. Okay and again I used another mock-up for our save the date. So I hope that seeing these brief you know run-throughs of how I made these designs will help you envision how easily you can create your own beautiful custom invitations with just a few simple elements, a little bit of time, and some patience. And I have many, many designs in my shop over on Etsy that can help you. And certainly if you have questions, hit me up either um, 
in the comments below or you're welcome to email me or contact me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I look forward to sharing the, the next installment of our series with you and I hope that you enjoyed this first look. I hope you'll join me as we get ready to walk Carmel down the aisle to her beloved Harold. Until next time!